Imagine witnessing an impossible feat. A stone monument taller than a 10-story building, weighing as much as a jumbo jet, being lifted upright by human hands alone. In the ancient world, such miracles were real. Obelisks, massive, slender pillars of hard granite, were quarried, hauled, and erected by civilizations without modern machinery. How did ancient builders move these gigantic monuments that even today would test the limits of our cranes and engineering? The answer lies in a blend of ingenuity, relentless labor, and it begins in ancient Egypt. In Egypt's southern desert, the city of Aswan was home to granite quarries that birthed the largest obelisks in history. Here, around 3,500 years ago, stonecutters carved directly into bedrock to create monoliths of astonishing size. The unfinished obelisk, still lying in its quarry, measures about 42 meters and would weigh an estimated 1,200 tons. Yet ancient Egyptians intended to lift it skyward. They began by cutting the obelisk loose with dolerite pounding stones, a method confirmed by thousands of round dolerite balls found in pits at the site. Chips and cracks could doom the project, as happened with the Aswan obelisk, a fissure in the granite led them to abandon it in place. Once freed from the quarry, the real journey began. How to move a granite needle weighing hundreds of tons across land and water. The Egyptians devised clever solutions. On land, they likely dragged the obelisk on a giant sled. Teams of workers hauled on ropes, and recent experiments suggest they wet the sand in front of the sled to reduce friction. A damp, firm sand surface doesn't pile up in front of the sledge, making it far easier to pull. In fact, the required pulling force can drop by about half. This simple trick, actually illustrated in a 3,800-year-old tomb painting, was probably one key that allowed Egyptians to tow such multi-ton colossi over the desert. Transport by river was the next crucial stage. The Nile was Egypt's highway and barges carried these megaliths downstream. Queen Hatshepsut, who erected towering obelisks at Karnak, left behind a vivid scene carved on her temple walls. Two immense obelisks lying flat, end to end on a single barge, being towed by a flotilla of 27 boats. That extraordinary image shows the scale of effort involved, an entire fleet working in unison to deliver the stones, after such a voyage, sometimes hundreds of miles, the final and most hair-raising task remained, raising the obelisk to stand upright. Erecting an obelisk was a monumental challenge, and tellingly, no ancient manual survives to explain how it was done. Engineers today have several ideas. Many believe a great earthen ramp was built. Workers could haul the obelisk up the ramp until its base dropped into place on a pedestal, then use ropes and levers to tip the monolith upright. Others suggest a system of pivots or rockers, incrementally lifting one end and bracing it, repeating the process until the obelisk stood. Modern experiments have shown that such methods are feasible in principle, but they also reveal the immense effort involved. Even a crew of a hundred volunteers struggled to raise a much smaller obelisk only part way, highlighting the incredible coordination the ancients must have marshaled. Yet with enough manpower and skill, the feat was achievable. An awe-inspiring triumph of human organization and engineering. The Egyptians' feats are astounding, yet they were not alone. Ancient Rome fell in love with obelisks. Emperors hauled more than a dozen of them from Egypt to adorn their cities. One of the largest, over 500 tons, was dragged to Rome in antiquity. When it was re-erected in 16th century Italy, it took 900 men and 74 horses to raise it. Even in the 1800s, relocating a 220-ton Egyptian obelisk to London nearly ended in disaster when a storm struck the ship carrying it. For sheer stone-moving prowess, consider Baalbek in Lebanon. Here, Roman engineers somehow built with blocks estimated at over 1,000 tons, but one gargantuan 1,150-ton monolith was left in the quarry, likely because even they couldn't transport it. 
All these cases underscore that even with more modern tools, moving such giants is no trivial task, making the ancient accomplishments all the more impressive. Farther south, in the highlands of Ethiopia, another culture tackled similar challenges. The Kingdom of Aksum, rising to prominence around the 1st century CE, erected towering stelae, some nearly 100 feet tall, carved from single blocks of granite. These obelisks served as royal markers and possibly had ceremonial or religious significance. One such monument, the Obelisk of Aksum, was taken by Italian forces in 1937 and shipped to Rome, only to be returned to Ethiopia decades later. When it was finally reinstalled in Aksum in 2008, it required modern cranes, custom engineering, and months of planning. Yet the ancient Aksumites had raised it centuries before with nothing but tools and muscle. Even in the far corners of the ancient world, megalithic feats were not uncommon. Prehistoric Britons raised the massive stones of Stonehenge, hauling some from over 140 miles away. One striking example comes from a remote Pacific island, Easter Island. This small, isolated society, with no draft animals or wheels, somehow moved dozens of giant Moai statues, up to 30 feet tall and 80 tons, many miles across the island. Recent experiments suggest the Moai were literally walked upright into place. By attaching ropes and swaying a statue side to side, a team of about 18 people was able to rock a five-ton replica forward in a controlled waddle, inching it along. This likely explains island legends that the statues walked themselves and showcases human ingenuity overcoming tremendous odds. Each of these cases, from Egyptian obelisks to Easter Island statues, reveals a common theme. Ancient builders possessed extraordinary practical knowledge of physics and engineering. They learned to exploit basic principles of friction, leverage and balance using only the materials at hand. Today, researchers are still uncovering how they did it. For instance, in 2018, archaeologists in Egypt discovered a 4,500-year-old ramp and pulley system in a quarry, showing how enormous stone blocks could be hauled up steep slopes by teams of workers using ropes and sledges. Such finds shed light on the tools and methods that might have been used to move obelisks and other megaliths. If moving a single obelisk required genius engineering, we still struggle to explain. What about structures that predate even our earliest civilizations? Incredibly, scientists have uncovered a massive pre-flood structure so advanced some say it couldn't have been built by humans at all. Let's take a look. It was the view, very firm view of archaeologists, that there had been no megalithic architecture. And when I say megalithic, I mean literally big stones, stone circles, huge constructions, nothing like that before 6,000 years ago. Central to my work was the notion of a global cataclysm, roughly 12,500, 12,800 years ago. They are not saying that it also wiped out a, a lost advanced civilization of prehistory. I'm saying that. In the heart of Lebanon's Bekaa Valley lies an ancient wonder that defies the sands of time, the Baalbek Temple Complex. This is Baalbek uh, in the Lebanon. Each of these three blocks weighs 900 tons. Home to some of the largest and most mysterious stone blocks ever used in construction, these colossal remnants of the Roman Empire's grandeur weigh as much as 1,650 tons each, more than an entire fleet of blue whales. How these stones were transported and precisely set into place remains one of history's most captivating puzzles. I don't know how they did it. All I know is they did it. I don't think anybody knows how they did it, how they lifted those stones, how they brought them up to that level. Join us as we delve into the enigmatic world of Baalbek, where ancient engineering meets modern curiosity, challenging everything we thought we knew about human ingenuity. A Roman site for sure, but what about this bizarre enclosure wall that surrounds it? Nestled in the fertile Bekaa Valley of Lebanon, the ancient site of Baalbek is a testament to architectural and cultural grandeur spanning thousands of years. Known as Heliopolis during the Hellenistic period, Baalbek's journey began as a modest Phoenician town named Baalath, dedicated to the worship of Baal, a god associated with the sun and storms, pivotal to the agricultural rituals of its people. 
The transformation of Baalbek accelerated following its conquest by Alexander the Great in 334 BC. Under Alexander, the city absorbed Greek cultural and architectural elements, emblematic of his broader strategy to fuse Greek and local traditions across the regions he conquered. This Hellenistic influence set the stage for Baalbek's later architectural evolution under the Romans, who saw the city's strategic and religious potential. What archaeologists say, they found they could move 900 ton blocks, but 1,000 tons was too much for them. Roman architects and engineers embarked on an ambitious construction agenda in the first century BC, which saw Baalbek grow into a grand ceremonial center. The centerpiece was the Temple of Jupiter, one of the largest temples in the Roman Empire featuring 54 massive granite columns, each standing 70 feet tall. Today, only six of these majestic columns remain, but they continue to dominate the landscape, offering a window into what was an architectural marvel of the ancient world. Nearby, the Temple of Bacchus stands as a testament to Roman decorative art and architectural detail, with its well-preserved carvings depicting mythological scenes and festivities. Not far from these, the Temple of Venus showcases a unique circular design, breaking from traditional Roman architectural norms and highlighting a syncretic blend of Roman and local religious practices. Baalbek's construction feats, especially the transportation and placement of massive limestone blocks, draw parallels with other ancient marvels like the Egyptian pyramids and Stonehenge, showcasing the Romans' advanced engineering techniques. Look at the famous King's Chamber. Its walls and its ceiling of the King's Chamber are all made with gigantic blocks. The site was not just an architectural statement, but also a cultural hub, attracting pilgrims and spectators from across the empire to its religious festivals and games, blending Roman and local traditions in grand displays of public celebration. In comparison to other monumental Roman sites like the Pantheon in Rome, Baalbek stands out for its scale and the complexity involved in erecting such gigantic structures far from the Roman heartland. The Pantheon, with its massive dome and oculus, reflects similar ambitions in Roman architectural prowess, but in a vastly different urban setting. Both sites, however, illustrate the Roman Empire's architectural ambition and its ability to mobilize resources and technology across its vast territories. The stone blocks of Baalbek, particularly within the Temple of Jupiter complex, represent some of the most astonishing elements of ancient architecture found anywhere in the world. These massive stones serve as a testament to the extraordinary engineering prowess of their builders. Their construction techniques and capabilities continue to spark both fascination and scholarly debate. At the heart of the complex sits the Trilithon, a trio of stone blocks that form the podium of the Temple of Jupiter. Each stone measures roughly 64 feet in length, 13 feet in height, and 14 feet in width and weighs about 800 tons. The precision with which these gigantic stones are fitted together, without any mortar, is truly remarkable. Such an engineering feat required not only advanced planning and ample resources, but also the ingenious use of simple machines like levers and inclined planes, combined with significant human and mechanical effort. Just about 900 meters from the main temple complex, in a nearby quarry, lies the stone of the pregnant woman. The quarry contains a number of very large blocks that were never transported. This monolith, approximately 69 feet long and weighing around 1,000 tons, has never been moved from where it was originally cut. The stone's name comes from a local legend suggesting that touching the stone can ensure a safe and easy delivery for pregnant women highlighting the cultural and superstitious significance these ancient stones hold within local folklore. In 2014, an even larger stone was unearthed in the same quarry. Why only recently excavated? Because the whole site was covered in sedimentation. At 64 feet in length and estimated to weigh about 1,650 tons, it stands as the largest known stone ever carved by human hands. This discovery significantly expanded our understanding of the capabilities of ancient engineers and their technological advancements. Comparing these megalithic stones to other ancient wonders provides further context to their impressive nature. For instance, while Stonehenge in England is renowned for its circular arrangement of standing stones, the largest of these stones weighs merely about 30 tons, far less than the massive blocks of Baalbek. The construction of Stonehenge involved transporting stones over long distances, presenting a different type of logistical challenge and ingenuity. However, the sheer scale and weight of the Baalbek stones showcase an unparalleled architectural ambition in the ancient world. 
Similarly, when we consider the Egyptian pyramids, particularly the Great Pyramid of Giza, the limestone blocks typically weigh between 2 to 15 tons, with the largest granite stones in the king's chamber weighing between 25 to 80 tons. Now, Egyptologists will tell you that, oh, they could move heavy blocks because they put them on wet sand and they push them along on wet sand. Maybe if you're just at ground level, that will do. But when you're 350 feet above the ground, as you are in the king's chamber, that won't do at all. The stones of Baalbek far exceed these in size, highlighting the unique challenges and skills required for their transport and placement. Unlike the primarily tomb-like structures of the Giza pyramids, Baalbek's temples served ceremonial and religious functions, indicating diverse uses of massive stones across ancient civilizations. This comparison not only illustrates the monumental scale of Baalbek's construction, but also underscores the diverse architectural and cultural expressions of ancient societies. The Baalbek Temple Complex, with its colossal stone blocks, stands as one of the greatest engineering achievements of the ancient world. The tasks involved in constructing this monumental site weren't just about brute strength. They required meticulous planning, advanced organizational skills, and a deep understanding of physics and engineering principles. These elements combine challenge our modern perceptions of ancient technology and showcase the ingenuity of our ancestors. The architectural grandeur of Baalbek was no accident. It reflected the Roman Empire's immense ambition and its desire to display power and divine favor. The sheer scale of the temple served multiple purposes, both religious and political, reinforcing the might of Rome and the sanctity of the location. This complex was designed to awe and affirm the presence of Roman authority in the region. The transportation of the massive stones is believed to have been primarily conducted using rollers made from large tree trunks, with the stones themselves placed on sledges. These sledges, acting as platforms, helped distribute the weight of the stones and prevented the rollers from sinking into the ground. Historical texts even mention the use of olive oil as a lubricant on the paths, a technique that significantly reduced friction, making it easier to move these enormous weights over considerable distances. The placement of these giant stones remains a subject of debate among historians. Techniques such as the use of wooden cranes, which were similar to those used in medieval constructions, likely played a role. These cranes, utilizing ropes, pulleys, and possibly treadwheels, would have amplified the force exerted by humans or animals. Another plausible technique involved constructing large earth ramps, which would have provided a gradual incline to drag the stones into their precise positions. Lever systems employing long wooden beams to lift and position stones might have also been used requiring less material than ramps, but a greater understanding of leverage mechanics. Drawing parallels, the construction techniques theorized for Baalbek closely resemble those hypothesized for the building of the Egyptian pyramids, particularly the Pyramid of Giza. Like Baalbek, the transportation of the pyramid stones likely involved sledges and possibly rollers, with the use of water as a lubricant depicted in ancient Egyptian wall paintings. For lifting, the Egyptians are believed to have utilized a combination of ramps and lever systems, constructed over a millennium before Baalbek. The pyramids highlight a continuity in complex engineering techniques that span cultures and ages, underscoring a shared architectural heritage in the ancient world. This shared legacy speaks volumes about the ingenuity embedded in ancient construction practices, linking disparate cultures through their monumental achievements.